I am holding in my hand the radio that many viewed as the buy once, cry once radio, particularly when I was getting started in amateur radio. Hi, I'm Josh, KI6NAZ. Thanks so much for watching the channel. There are so many people who want to take a buy once, cry once mentality to radio. And I'm not necessarily going to say you shouldn't do that, but I want you to open the aperture a little bit and think about what we're talking about. So this is an all band radio. This is the Yesu 857, now no longer in production. It does VHF, UHF, and HF in a relatively small package. There's literally two antenna plugs on the back there for the two different types of antennas. These things were pretty expensive when they came out, and there are a number of people that covet these things, and it's actually still a completely fine operating radio, and it, it you know, for the size, not bad. The downside of this buy once, cry once mentality is I think it expects that you are going to learn like a radio functions or will just work through this litany of features and you will all of a sudden, bing, have all the knowledge of radio or at least how this radio functions and you'll be good to go. The reality is, is that radio doesn't really work that way and, and neither do humans. We learn through doing, and it's usually best if we're following our interests when we are learning. It's tough to get a kid, or an adult for that matter, to learn something that they're not that interested in, or they don't see a really hard value at the end of going through the process. And so there are features and things in this radio that there's not really a lot of reason to go find one of these used. They still have a markup, a considerable markup on them and be like, ah, okay, now I have VHF, UHF, and HF capability. I can put that on the shelf and uh, I'm just a tech and I I'm going to just use two meters because that's really the only thing I talk on. And oh, by the way, the repeater is, you know, 20 miles down the road, right? This is probably overkill. So what should you be doing anyway, instead of having this buy once, cry once mentality? Well, similar to the video that I posted not too long ago about future-proofing your radio or getting a radio that's going to be future-proof, I am going to encourage that you start out in amateur radio and develop your skills in operating and understanding how radios work and function. And then second, figure out what it is you enjoy doing and what you don't enjoy doing. A radio like the 857 has a very specific menu system to be able to cram in all this capability and some of these buttons can be a little confusing. And for someone who may just want to do VHF, UHF repeater work, this isn't the most convenient radio to use. In fact, I would say it's a little confusing to do so. So instead, and also this, this will help for something we're going to get to later in the video, I would recommend that you get a inexpensive mobile VHF, UHF radio that that could go in your car as I have one right behind me here underneath my 7610. I have an ICOM 2730. You can find them relatively inexpensive. They come up on sale. In fact, there was just a sale on them during Hamvention in the month of May. So that is a really solid base station-ish still a mobile, but base station user capable radio that you could put in your home with an external antenna or put in your car. Now the advantage is that the second point that I want to get to, the advantage of that is if this goes down, that's your whole world, right? This is your whole communication backbone, this 857. If you lose this radio, if it dies, now you have nothing. You went from all bands to no bands in a heartbeat. So I'd much rather you have the redundancy of a second box with a separate antenna all doing its own thing over there and then have an HF radio that you can use in parallel or at the same time. Something that you should keep in mind with a lot of these all-in-wonder uh, radios, which I, I'll be honest, I'll, I'll get to that in a little bit. Not a, not the biggest fan in all-in-ones uh, for reasons that, you know, are just logistics things. When you put this into VHF, UHF, that's what it's doing. It's not also going to monitor the HF side while you're potentially listening to the Hurricane WatchNet or some f frequency that you really enjoy. In, in favor of that, I like to have a VHF, UHF radio by my HF radio and I can listen to both. I can have my VHF, UHF scanning on my favorite repeaters on one channel. I can be listening to Simplex 146.520 National Simplex on the other channel and then I can be using my HF radio for making contacts on single sideband or doing FT8 or whatever I want to do. If you go with an all-in-one, you're sometimes limiting yourself because they're not necessarily 
uh, having the ability to be able to switch that receiver actively to listen to both sides. It's a nuance, but when you want to listen to more things, sometimes the best option is to just get a radio that's more designed for that. Does that mean you're making a, a, an, an Alton Brown faux pas of buying unitaskers? Yeah, potentially. But if a unitasker breaks, you still have all the other radios that potentially are in your arsenal that you can use. Now, the uh, caveat of uh, jack of all trades, master of none, let's put that into perspective with an all-in-one radio. Yesu makes a newer HF-only radio called the FT891. It's the Poda Darling. Everybody that really likes to do portable operations in parks on the air usually gravitates towards that radio. 100 watts, and it's about the same size as this. So what's interesting, if you think about this, is how do we cram all the bands, all the capabilities into this box, but then Yesu comes out with an 891 that's almost the same size. This is totally non-scientific what I'm talking about here. From my ear measurement capability, the receiver on the 891 is better than that on the 857. So if you needed this for very sensitive work, sometimes the all-in-one jobs are not as effective as the unitasker HF only or VHF UHF only radios. So yeah, you're doubling the size by having two boxes over here potentially, but you, you get a little bit more performance than going with an all-in-one, at least that's been my experience. Now keep in mind, all-in-ones have kind of gone out of favor at this point. There's only one that I know of that's really on the market from the major brands, and that's the ICOM 7100. CQ, 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 Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. November Radio 1, Denmark which just went through a bit of an upgrade, cost of living kind of uh, upgrade. And so that's still available. You could still go that route if you absolutely wanted to have that. But it feels like the radio manufacturers are starting to kind of move away from these all-in-one radios. I can't say that's good or bad because there's definitely a market for it. But uh, for some people that are more performance-minded, I think they generally avoid the all-in-ones. So I got to editing this video and I realized I kind of didn't answer a fundamental thing and people who've been following my channel for a very long time have probably maybe picked up on it, is that I'm actually a big fan of some all-in-one radios, but not all of them, or I guess I play special rules with some of them and not the others. In this video, what we spent a lot of time talking about was people who might have more of a preparedness mindset and is thinking about having a good communication solution for layered communications, part of your pace plan, whatever, right? But one of my favorite radios that I use in the field more often than not is the Icon 705. Sure, I've taken it to really cold locations, really hot locations, but I've always had a backup with me as part of my pace plan. Remember, pace, primary, alternate, contingency, and emergency is literally a radio per option. You can't just use one radio and think you're getting all four of those letters. You're not, even if you change modes of operation. And the reason for that is quite simple. If we lost that one radio, we would be out of the entire plan. So we don't do that, right? I always have a backup. I carry a backup radio, usually a handheld if I'm running the 705, and also likely one that has APRS or the capability to do WinLink emailing, right? So no, at nothing I said in this video is, is to try and discourage you from having an all-in-one radio. I would recommend to make it maybe your third radio or fourth radio. And some of you are like, I don't even want two radios. What are you talking about, Josh? Well, the reality is, is that, yeah, they're a little bit more niche for specific types of stuff. If you're going to be outdoors only, then these all-in-one radios might be a compelling option, like a 705. But even then, I'd tell you, most amateur radio operators, particularly those are starting out, you should probably go with a 100-watt radio, right? So I appreciate this is a nuanced argument. 100 watts is going to do a lot better for you, particularly if you don't have a fantastic antenna setup. And of course, that leads to more videos that talk about things like antennas and why the best antenna you can bring is almost more important than any radio you have along for the ride. And you can find out about all that if you're new to amateur radio by going to my playlist on my channel, Are You New to Radio? Start Here. 
please do. Please avail yourself of a ton of videos that I've made in the past because I, I think it does actually help people. And we try and break things down like the PACE plan, emergency communications, why you want HF, why certain antennas are better for portable operation, etc. And it should hopefully flesh out some of those details. Now, mentioning the 857, my opinions on the 857 are based off of me buying it. I had talked about it a lot in the past after a very little bit of time using it, and I knew that I needed to buy it so that I could actually speak a little bit more authoritatively on it. I don't dislike the radio except for dealing with that menu system we talked about. It's often jokingly referred to as the deep F menu for a reason because it's a big, long, deep mess of a menu system that you have to dive through it can be a little clunky. That's not to say that it's not a good radio or passable in these situations that you might need it in an emergency, but please keep what I said in mind as you're thinking about where to spend your hard-earned money in the area of buying amateur radios and all the other things that go along with it, and I hope you remember to focus on that antenna. If you enjoyed this video, I'd love to hear about it, and the best way to do that is Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you must, but leave a comment below and tell me your thoughts after watching. I'm Josh KI6NAZ. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll talk to you later. 73.